grab them? Can you grab babies. them? Babies. Oh, babies. Oh, these are <laughs> babies. Oh, they're so cute. Mmm. Okay, guys, we are going to try to do this conure care video for you with three sun conures. Where's the last one? Plus Comet, my giant sun conure. For those of you non-bird people, he's not actually a sun conure. I'm joking, because his coloration is similar. And the other one is on the chair watching us. Who knows where they'll end up. Okay, so conure video. I'm actually somewhat hoping these girls are loud so that you have a realistic expectation of what you're getting into when you get a conure. Just because they're little doesn't mean they're quiet. It's like, yeah. What kind of treats do Sun Conyers prefer? My Sun Conyers favorite treats are spray millet is the top favorite, sunflower seeds, safflower seed. They love those. Uh, mixed varieties of nuts. What else do they like? <laughs> I think that's about it. All of those are treat foods for Conyers. Their main diet is a fresh mix in the morning that we make on a daily basis. Really? Yell in my ear. <laughs> That's what they do. So our sun conures get two meals a day like the rest of our parrots. First one is that fresh food I was talking about, which is like a natural feeding system. It changes with what's based on what's in season. Babies. In the evening, these guys get a organic pellet that is super high quality. It's cold pressed, so we don't lose any of the nutritional value through the manufacturing process. And we love the ingredients of our pellets. When it comes to diet, we did so much research that we now offer what we recommend. We have our cookbook series. <laughs> We have a cookbook series that talks about the recipe that we serve in the morning and talks about the pellets that we give in the evening. Then, as you know, that their favorite treat foods, those are reserved for really good behaviors and any sort of training that we do with them. So that's how we use the treats. It's also how we would use fruit in their diet as well. You can probably see one is there, one is there, one is here. As far as showering and bathing, ideally you would do this every day with these guys. One of the ways that you can do it is just offer them an extra water dish for them to soak down in. I found that as soon as I give my birds a clean water dish, they are jumping in it. <laughs> only these guys, because they're the only ones that can actually fit in the size water dish that I give. That is one way they can just self bathe. These guys do that for sure. Another thing that they really like is when I'm doing dishes, they will just crawl down my arm into my hand and soak themselves in the water. So they love playing in the sink you can actually run a faucet and have them run through it. Um, some birds, especially budgies, love laying against and rubbing. What was that? So many distractions, you guys. Where'd all three of you end up? Okay, one, two, three. Got them. They're up there. Two of them are there. One is still there. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, showering and bathing. So in the sink is another method. Rubbing themselves against wet greens is a third method. A lot of small birds really like doing that. So if you get a bunch of greens, you rinse them and you don't necessarily thoroughly dry them or anything, you can just lay them out in a dish. They can rub against them. Hey baby. Who had sweet potato on their beak? Okay. Uh, another method of showering or bathing is getting a shower perch and letting your bird shower with you. I've found that with these guys, they loved being on the top part of the shower and <laughs> like watching me shower. And then sometimes they would jump down and they would get on my shoulder and my hair. And then especially after a shower, they love playing with my wet hair. You can use a spray bottle and do some misting. If your bird does not like showering or bathing or getting wet, you can literally train it. You can train just about anything. I show this in a playlist with Rasta, an Alexandrian parakeet who hated water, and I trained him to bathe. Eventually, once you train them to associate it positively, um, you do not have to reward them for it. It becomes self-rewarding. So that's a really cool thing about training bathing. They also are great hairdressers. So as far as bar spacing, I'm going to leave a resource in the description that you can check out that goes over bar spacing for all species of birds and what to follow. The bigger, the better. As far as enclosures, I use five by eight aviaries for my birds or six foot diameter aviaries or 15 foot diameter aviaries. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that tickles. Wow, distracto. So the bigger, the better. That way the enclosure isn't this horrible place. It is a place of fun where they can go and destroy things and not get in trouble for it. They can be encouraged to forage and self-entertain. They should enjoy being in their enclosure as much as they enjoy coming out to hang out with you. So it should be a balance. And I have all three, right? One, 
two, three, yeah. Speaking of toys, foraging toys are awesome because it keeps these little guys busy. These little guys are super duper 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 noisy. These are the ones that I have the biggest problem with neighbors about and how they can just keep going and going and going is really, really insane. So the more foraging activities you can teach your bird to do, the better. And then you can plan it around times of natural <laughs> screaming, which is usually in the morning and in the evening. So if your bird likes to wake up with the sun and scream about it and go to bed with the sun and and scream about it before that happens you can put some foraging activities that are literally gonna keep your bird busy for an hour and the Sun will go down it will have missed it <laughs> and we'll just be like oh I was busy I totally missed the Sun going down now it's just down and I go to sleep and that's what I do with all of my birds when I keep them outdoors I just beat them to it I keep them busy and then before they know it they're like oh it's dark, I have to go to sleep and I forgot to yell about it. Foraging is fantastic in the toy form. Wow, what are you guys doing? The other thing is they really like preening type toys. And these are toys that my doves also really love. It's um, kind of bamboo form, things that they can pull out. Uh, I have like a flower bouquet toy in my toy line that is super popular with these guys. They just love fixing everything or undoing things. Also, any toys that can keep their beaks busy. I have a kebab line, which is amazing. In our our toy bundles that we send out each month and it is all of my birds favorites and I have birds from Sun Conyers to an African Grey to galahs to macaws hands down their favorite toys are the kebabs the reason why is they go from soft woods to harder woods they go from small to large and so you have this really awesome variety of being able to pick it apart and whether your bird is a baby bird or an older bird they have the same ability to pull it apart and have fun with it it's gonna make any bird feel like they have the sharpest beak in the world and it's going to actually be filing it down. So of course when it comes to toys, check out mine. They're all natural. They're made of really, really cool things like oyster shells, coconuts, bamboo, woods. They're only used with vegetable dyes. <laughs> I swear by them, I love them, it's what I give my own birds. So everything I recommend is something that I actually use with my own flock. Why we picked Sun Conyers? First of all, we didn't pick them, Dave did. And I think it's because he didn't do his research. <laughs> I think because he saw them doing certain behaviors that he wanted to use in our show that we didn't actually end up using in the show, or even training. Hopefully he'll be working on that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Personality traits, pros and cons. The pros are that they're so much fun. Certain personality traits are gonna seem like a pro to you that might seem like a con to me and vice versa. So their noise, definitely a con. Uh, their personality is naturally just how playful and funny they are. Up there, it's a con. I love, or er, it's a pro. Oh man, I'm gonna get awful at this con and pro. <laughs> that was intentional, guys. Gosh, personality traits, to be honest, they're all a little bit different. I have three girls, they're all just funny and playful. However, Lily is a rock star. She's fantastic, she loves to work, she loves to train. She She's just a very quick learner and easy to engage with and interact with. Phoebe wants the least amount to do with people. That's Phoebe. And Dietka is our baby. She is the youngest of the three and she falls somewhere in between where she picks her people. They're all trainable. Lily is by far the most easily, easy to engage. I can't even focus. Because... Hi Comet. Good boy. Good boy Comet, good boy. Those of you that don't know, I'm gonna be posting a video. I've been working with play cleaning this guy and getting him reconditioned back into shape. And I'm so proud of the fact that he just flew right now because I tried for weeks to get you to fly and you wouldn't do it. And here you are, you're doing it. P.S. He looks like a giant sun conure. Don't get angry or jealous. Okay, another personality trait, they get jealous. Luckily, they're also easily distracted. I feel like Comet might actually do a flight session right now. Comet. Oh, what a good boy. Good job, buddy. Okay, it's turning into the comment video, which I'm kind of not happy about. Let's do it again. Hey, you dive bomber, I saw that. Good boy. Oh my goodness, good boy. That's a con that you poop. Oh, that was a shell. I guess that wasn't poop. I thought you didn't want to fly anymore. 
try to do a Kanye video, but you have a macaw. The other thing about toys is to keep getting their favorites, of course. If there's a certain toy that they always destroy, keep getting it because they're loving it. But also make sure you change it up and you add variety and you keep building on what they like. Our toy <laughs> arm. Woo! How about you just hang out? You wanna try just hanging out? Our monthly toy bundles are called mystery boxes because not only is it a surprise for your bird, but it's a surprise for you too. So we pick different toys each month to send to you. A lot of them are similar as far as made out of a lot of the same things, but they're created individually and differently so that it offers something different and fun for your bird while still staying within things that they like and they recognize as being able to destroy. I'll put a link in the video description to our ah. parrot toy bundles that you can check out. Hello, handsome guy. Who knew I'd have ah. a macaw and my conure video, but I guess it counts because you look like a giant sun conure. Ah. <laughs> you do. How much time to spend out of the cage? This question always has the same answer no matter what species you're talking about. When it comes to having your bird out of the cage, it's not about the amount of time you spend with your bird out of the cage. It's about the quality of time that you spend with your bird uh. out of the cage. So if you spent most of your time with your bird out of the cage, yet they were negative interactions as far as he was always getting into trouble, then it wasn't really time well spent and you're really relationship long over the long term is actually ah. going to go backwards. If you have a dedicated three hours to spend and in the morning you take your bird out, you shower with him in the shower, you give him breakfast on a stand where he's just happily eating breakfast, ah. then you do a little training session for treats or vice versa, and then I'm going to put him back in his cage for some ah. foraging opportunities while I go to work. Then when you get back from work, come home, have, have a training session with him, put him out for dinner on a stand or maybe not, whatever you want to do, hang out, and then put him away for his 12 hours of sleep. That was a much better amount of time to have spent with you where your relationship's going to go way further in the long term ah. than if you spent the entire day yelling and flipping out at your bird for doing bird-like things. They're very destructive creatures. They're going to chew on the crown molding. <laughs> they're, they're going to get into things that you don't want ah. to, them to and even dangerous things where they find wires or cables to chew. Ah, she's like burrowing into my neck. You can't see her, she's just super burrowed. So just keep in mind the quality of the amount of time that you're spending with your bird outside of its enclosure versus like, hey, I'm a better bird owner than you because my bird was out for 14 hours. <laughs> even though I had to towel him at the end of the day to get him to go back in his enclosure. It's way better to have spent less time that was all positive and in the long run is only helping build your relationship. Uh, macaws are quieter than Conyers, guys. Okay, a lot of you are asking about hormonal behavior with Conyers and nesting in your shirt, doing anything that appears nesty is nesty. Try to discourage that. Um, these guys will play in like blankets and things like that. Just be mindful of when you're doing it and at what time of day and, and all the other triggers that could go along with it. If it's, only, if it's the one thing that you're doing, it may not trigger hormones. But if you're giving them mushy food and you're allowing all this nesting behavior all the time, and especially during the spring or the fall, then you're most likely triggering hormones. Okay, so the noise thing. Uh, it's easier to train any other bird to be quiet, you guys. Maybe I would argue a cockatoo, but <laughs> see what happened. This is a bigger step than you thought. Um, however, it can be done. It can be, not that you can train a sun conure to be silent, but you can minimize how annoying they are. You can put quiet on cue, you can put words on cue, you can put whispering on cue, any noise, whistle, singing, anything that you like more than the screeching and screaming, you can encourage with treats and training. But that is why it is so important to have the diet correct because if your bird is getting seeds and nuts in its normal everyday diet for doing nothing, 
It's not gonna understand that it's a food reward when you try to use it as a treat. If your bird gets vegetables in the morning and a really good quality pellet at night, and then you use seeds and, and nuts for training, now all of a sudden that's a high value and it's gonna think about what did I just do to earn that and how do I do it again because I want more of those treats. So keep that in mind. Everything goes back to diet. Diet is the foundation of which you build a lot of your training on. Honestly, on my consultations, it's the very first question I ask. What are you feeding your bird? What is your bird's uh, diet? How to deal with aggressive uh, biting conures. Again, you want to shape their behavior through food. So literally uh, teach them to step up, teach them tricks, teach them things that you want. Training uh, is, your na is your common language. You use that to communicate, I want these behaviors, uh, I don't want these behaviors. And then there's you being so quiet. Uh, You're just the best. Um, mm, mm, mm. So distracted by you because you're so oh. cute. I have been hanging out with Comet a lot lately, so he's just so, oh, he's getting all baby oh. boat on me. I can't take it. Mm. In essence, how to deal with biting aggressive conures, trick training is a great way to form a bond and a language. Most birds are biting because you are missing all the signs leading up to them having to bite you, or it's been established that they just know you're gonna ignore all the other signs, so they just go straight to biting. What you have to do is establish a relationship based on respect, and a lot of that can be done through trick training, because that's really how you're gonna get to know your bird and how your bird's gonna get to know you. It's also hands-off training, so you don't have to worry about getting bit in the process of training, and your bird doesn't have to worry about having to bite you to communicate. Okay, so how to reduce the loud screaming I said it was possible I didn't explain how this takes time all of the the stop screaming stuff that I've heard from people they see a change within a week <laughs> are you getting your butt kicked by a conure here they're teaming up on you buddy it's not cool um all the changes that I see with screaming, usually people start to see a change within a week. Like they'll say, oh, the noise level is decreasing. But it usually takes months to phase out really obnoxious screaming. The way you do it is by putting silent on cue and calm on cue and talking or whispering or chatter or gosh, anything. <laughs> besides the screaming. So what I would say with working with three, I definitely have one noisier one, and it's Dietka. Dietka is the noise maker. I would work with Phoebe and Lily first, and I would work on teaching them to talk. Lily is the most vocal as far as actual good vocals. Yeah like talking vocals, she says babies and she gives kisses. So I would work with her first on putting that on cue because then she would be begging and she'd get to a point where she would do it all the time and it would be more likely to teach these two that like, hey, that's how you get attention, that's how you get everything that you want is through these other vocalizations. And birds learn vocalizations better from other birds. So she will be able to teach them She'll be able to teach them how to talk easier than I would have time at teaching them to say the same things that I've already taught her. To be honest, based on the language that I'm getting from my Conyers right now, they aren't really interested in hanging out with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them away and I'll show you how I do it. And this just kind of means like they're ready for their own time. Woo! They've been in here for a while. I was filming a Tasty Tuesday for my Patreon account and they were all taste testing it. So their food motivation is down right now for me to be able to show you guys anything. Hey buddy, good job. There you go. So I'll show you how I get them back. I use safflower seeds and their cue is babies. <laughs> girly girls. And the only problem is that Comet's probably gonna wanna come. Babies, come here girlies. Come on girly girl. Good girl. So I'm going to go take them from away. Hold on, comment. I'll be back to play. They were bored by the fact that I was trying to make a video about them. <laughs>